In this video, we'll learn how to find the intercepts and read other information from the graph of a function. So here's an example of a function we might be looking at. The most important thing to realize about the graph of a function is that when you see a pair of coordinates that are on the graph, so for example, we've got 4, 3 here, the fact that 4, 3 is on the graph of my function is just another way of saying that f of 4 equals 3. Then when I plug 4 into this function, 3 is the y value that I get back out. So all of these pairs of points that you see on the graph here are all representations of pairs of numbers where when you plug the first number into the function, the second number is what you get back out. So one thing that this can tell us is, for example, the domain and the range of our function. Remember that the domain is the set of all the x values that we can possibly plug into our function. And what we can see here is that we can plug in x values all the way from negative 6 up to 11. And that means that the domain of our function is all x values from negative 6 up to 11. So all x values that are greater than or equal to negative 6 and less than or equal to 11, that's the domain of our function. The range of our function is the set of all possible y values that we can get out of our function. And again, we can see that is going to be from negative 3 all the way up to positive 4. So the range of our function is negative 3 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 4. So very often the domain and range are really easy to read off of the graph of our function. Something else that we're often interested in are what we call intercepts. And intercepts are simply points where the graph crosses either the x-axis or the y-axis. X-intercepts are places where the graph crosses the x-axis. And in this function, we have three x-intercepts. So sometimes we'll think about the x-intercepts as simply the x-coordinates where that happens. So the x-intercepts of this function would be negative 3, positive 6, and positive 10, because those are the x values where my graph crosses the x-axis. We don't really have to think about the y values because since we're crossing the x-axis, we know the y value is going to be 0. Finally, we could think about y-intercepts, and those are simply places where our graph crosses the y-axis. Since the graph of a function has to pass the vertical line test, if our graph really does represent a function, we will only ever have one y-intercept. Sometimes we might not have any y-intercepts, but we'll definitely never have more than one y-intercept. And in this case, the y-intercept is the number 3. And again, we don't need to know that the x-coordinate is 0, because since we're on the y-axis, we know the x-coordinate will have to be 0.